Hi, and thanks for joining this short video about how to enable core support in your RESTify API. Um, so in this video, I will demonstrate how to enable cores and how to call it from a small sample Angular application that we will build throughout this video. Uh, my name is Thorsten Hans. I'm a consultant at ThinkTecture here in Germany. And on this slide, you can find all the um, all the information that you need in order to get in get in touch with me. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just send me a mail, uh, leave a comment in the section below, or drop me a mention on Twitter. So that's enough marketing for now. Let's jump right into the code. So as I've mentioned in the uh, in the first video, oops, um, Restify has uh, has made some changes regarding module or the structure of um, the Restify module itself. So previously, until version four, um, Restify brought, um, sh was shipped with a lot of additional functionality that you may not need depending on how your API looks like. Um, and this has changed uh, since Restify five. So since Restify five, you have to bring in more node modules. So there are specified node modules for. Uh, dedicated features like uh, we used Restify errors in the first video, and right now we will use Restify dash cores dash middleware. So we have to bring that uh, into our project by calling npm install Restify dash cores dash middleware dash dash save in order to have it as a, a dependency listed in our package. Package JSON, as you can see over here, there we are. So let's bring it in our index.js. So there's a course middleware equals require restify dash course dash middleware. And after importing the middleware function, um, we need to call this function and provide the configuration for our API. So this is, of course, uh, may be uh, different for your scenario, but it's just to understand how things work and what could be what could be achieved by enabling um, the core support. So let's say we have a const course object, and that this is the result of the course middleware that we call and provide some um, configuration. So first of all, um, you have always to specify the um, URLs from where your API may be called using JavaScript. That's called the origins. So the origins can either be an array of just strings like HTTP um, star dot uh, my domain dot com. So this means all subdomains underneath my domain dot com are able to call in my API using JavaScript. You can also put in some regular expression over there, or you can specify it um, more fine granular by just saying it's the single page application dot my domain dot com slash I don't know um, market, marketing feature. So you have really a hundred percent control of who is able or from which domain um, are calls into your API allowed and from which um, or which um, URLs may be blocked. For development time, you can of course uh, bring in your HTTP dash dash localhost and the port your um, application is running locally. Or there is a way to, of course, enable all domains. You shouldn't use that in production areas. It's just for testing or demonstration purpose. So that's possible. But we will um, be a little bit more strict. We say it's localhost colon. 4200 and we can specify allow, allow headers so um, by providing an array of allowed headers you can specify which HTTP headers or custom HTTP headers may be attached to an incoming call for example let's say I have an x-app-version header and by whitelisting this header over here, any call containing this header coming from this URL may proceed, may be preceded to the um, to the corresponding um, function down below. 
But if a call comes in and, for example, has an HTTP header called X, my app dash version, the call will be blocked because that custom header isn't part of this allowed headers array. So if you have custom HTTP headers, then you have to specify those over there in allow headers. You can also specify if credentials are allowed um, or not. So if there are credentials being sent using an HTTP request to the API, you have to enable that one. And um, you have expose headers. Um, we will look into expose headers later. So there is an, um, a well-known uh, standard HTTP header as part of the response and you can specify values that will be sent along with all the default values for that header. Okay, but let's keep it with this configuration for now. So we have this course object that has been generated as a result of the course middleware function. And um, right now we have to hook up our course configuration into our um, API. So we use server.pre to hook up the course preflight and we use server.use to hook up the actual course support. So if you, for example, um, change data um, from the client using a post or put or delete operation, then um, you're always generating two um, HTTP requests. One is the so-called pre-flight that we register as a pre-middleware over there. So that's typically an options request that's um, sent right immediately in front of um, the post, the put, or the delete call. And only if that one succeeded, then um, you're forwarded or allowed to call in the actual request. And for the actual request, the course middleware is again applied in front of or just before any of the real methods that we um, defined behind the routes like API products, like the post call over here. Okay, so let's save that and let's go to the console and let's hit npm start and our API should work as expected using Postman. So let's go there, let's say, give me all the products. I get an empty array. Let's create a new product and let's query for that again and we get milk. So at least we have one product over there right now. And right now let's, one moment, let me just create a new tab over here. And right now I use ng, that's uh, the Angular command line, um, to create, uh, to quickly create a new single page application because, you know, course will only be applied using, uh, if you call into the API using JavaScript. So Postman over there does not use um, JavaScript to call in the API. So that will work no matter how you configure course, but it's, it's um, important for client side queries or calls. So let's use Angular CLI to create a new um, test course application. Okay, there we are. So test course project has been generated. <coughs> let's open up the code editor again in this folder. Yeah, let's move that over there. We will use it in a minute, in a second. But let's call npm start. So. Um, the Angular CLI generates a project that's also providing re a reload feature, so we can just start the Hello World sample in the background. And right now we focus on um, calling into our API. So right now, in the upcoming two minutes or so, there will be some Angular-specific uh, knowledge. If you're not interested in using Angular any uh, anymore or you want to use something else this is just angular specific that's not related to our api so let's bring in the http client module from dash angular dash common dash http let's say we want to use that one and we already have a component let's um, 
get rid of all the stuff over there. And join. And let's go to our component. Let's bring in on init. Let's bring in the HTTP client that we will use uh, to call our API. Okay, let's implement the interface on init. This is just a, a lifecycle hook, so we can uh, ensure that the method um, ng on init is called once or immediately in front of rendering the rendering the component constructor. We need the constructor to bring independent uh, the HTTP client by using dependency injection. Okay, and we want to implement and we want to call in this HTTP client. We want to do get request to HTTP localhost port 3000 slash API slash product. So we, we signed the result to a variable called products. Let's create this one public products is of type array of any. And we set it to null. And we got a generic method over there, which is an array of any. Okay, there we go. Now let's update the view and let's say we want a div and the div should be our products formatted as JSON. Okay, let's visit our application and try that one. So localhost 4200. And as you can see, let, let me reload the page. So over here in the network tab, I can see the products request. It's just a get request. And we see there are some access control expose headers. So these are is the actual header that we can manipulate where we can put in further values over there. Um, we see the control allow origin that we our origin is allowed. So for now, let's try to Let's try to change something over there. Let's say only 4201 is allowed. Let's go back to our application. Let's reload the application. And there we are. We get an error in the console. And we can see there is no, um, or our domain isn't, isn't present or isn't marked as a safe origin. So we are not allowed to call into this API. Let's go back and change that. So let's again, it will work. Okay, so API has restarted, but we get an empty array from our API. And we allow the header x-app-version. So let's take this one. Let's go to the source of our application. And let's add an additional header. So let's say const headers equals new HTTP headers. And let's say set append app version equals 1.0.0. And let's, so we have defined the headers. Right now, let's modify our query to send those headers. And let's test our call again. Go to network, go to products, and we see we have a request header x app version that has been successfully sent to the API. And now 
Let's change this to SPA version. Go back, reload the page, and you see again there we have two errors because the XSPA version isn't allowed to be sent to our API. So that has been checked by the pre-flight. So let's check that, build that again to app version, and there we are having again our API up and running with full support for cores. So if we review the code for API again, there's one thing I want to definitely um, tell you guys again. This is definitely possible. You can allow course support for all domains, but you should not do that in production areas. So never assign a wildcard um, assign wildcard origins. Um, expect you are building a, a public API, of course, <laughs> but uh, in in business or in uh, corporate environments, never specify wildcard um, origins if you are not if it is not a use case for your product for your service. Okay, that that was for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any question, leave a comment below and. It would be great if you leave a thumb up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks.